What? What do you want? You're watching The Push with Prue. Isn't that good enough? Do you know who Prue is? Have you met Prue? Do you understand who Prue is? Then there are no more questions. You just shut your mouth and you listen and you do what you're told. And the spider says to do exactly that because you don't mess with the spider. You know why? Because you will get bit. Thanks, Brandon. Oh, goodness. Yep, I've forgotten what my real face looks like. He does. I was bleeding. Which, just like you, makes me an anomaly, an aberration. Watch the switch. You're too young to be on steroids. Ah! Yeah. Kind of like, maybe not all of the ins and outs on camera, but like, it'd be cool to like uh, time. Uh, what's it called when time it's lapse? recording? Fa yeah, time yes. lapse. Oh, time lapse. That would be really neat. Dope. But I've man. done time lapse when I clean before, and it's so cool. Yeah, we. Uh, one of my buddies. Uh, we were in Kalamazoo and he got mad at us about something. We were messing with him while he was driving and then he stopped talking to us and I time lapsed and like the whole ride from Kalamazoo to Coloma. And it's like a, it's that's like a, a good, minute long a time ride. lapse. Well, and I was dope. like, I was like, that's pretty cool. Just AJ super pissed at us. Just occasionally pushing up his glasses <laughs> and just white knuckle in the steering wheel, getting more and more pissed <laughs> at us as we go. But. Uh, all right, can we go? Okay, sorry. All right, so you're going to introduce yourself because I suck at it. All right, cool. So how's it going? Uh, I'm Hayden, or H2, here with uh, representing GLWA and myself, and I'm here on The Push, with sponsored Pro. by Dr. Pepper. Well, I don't, I don't <laughs> want a bitch with love. <laughs> Dr. Pepper's good, too. Um, I'm not drinking right now, but it's good. So you're representing Glawa. I'm Glois. not. I will never not say that. I'm sorry. Damn you, sorry. Chad Nails. <laughs> with a Z, you throw some respect on that man's name. Okay. Rest in peace with a Z. <laughs> Come on, it just flows though. So, <laughs> yeah. what is your affiliation with GLWA? So it's a secret. What everybody knows. It's a secret. Uh, Obviously, not everybody <laughs> I know. Well, a lot of people know. I'm the owner of GLWA. Oh, that's right. <laughs> never mind. I didn't. Owner, that. promoter. Wrestler, janitor. Wrestler, janitor. Yep. yep. It's a lot of hats to wear. It is, yeah. It's uh you you've been here all morning waiting for me to have like at least a smidge of time. And, and I appreciate it's, it. It's uh it's it's a process. Uh my wife hates it because it's it's a twelve hour day. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. I, I'd actually impressed it's only 12 hours because it seems like it would be a lot longer because you have the shutdown time too. Yeah, it depends at the end of the night. Uh, the, the running joke is I have to say goodbye to you and it's going to take 45 minutes because it's, it's the goodbye, everybody, you, you shake everybody's hand and then you stop and you talk and then... You're getting blown up. My wife's texting me. Are you done? Are you here yet? I'm going to go to bed soon. <laughs> the baby's asleep. I'm like, ah, yep, I'm on my way. Two hours later, where are you? So Midwest goodbye. Yep. Italy. Midwest wrestling, yeah. <laughs> I can see that as well. But uh, yeah, so I'm the owner of GLWA. If you want to know the, the story about GLWA, or do. do you want to know the story of I want to know the story of you and then how GLWA kind of, how you came into it. Okay. So the story kind of starts with me. So uh, myself and some friends locally that no longer do anything with wrestling, we started a yard fed. Okay. It was NWF Backyard Wrestling. And uh, the mid, or the, uh, the East Coast they were going crazy like with like their backyard wrestling like they had like a community really and it, it was crazy and like they're doing like these like super shows meeting up and stuff and i'm like here i am in the midwest portraying five characters and kicking my own ass uh but uh so i was like i talked to this one guy uh he was like a big deal to the backyard wrestling community at the time and I said, I was like, do you know anybody from Michigan? You seem like you know everybody. And he's like, yeah, 
I know uh, the student named Eli, who I don't know how long you guys have been going to shows, um, but a dude by the name of Eli Shelton. Uh, he used to be tag team partner with Jason Hotch. He's commentator. Uh, He's commentated for us a couple times. Oh, um, I think I know who you're talking so about. So they had, they had a yard fed. And I was like, well, shit, let's link up. So he put me in contact with Eli. Me and Eli started talking. We started planning this like super mega Michigan backyard wrestling show. That's beautiful. And uh, I went to, I was following <clears throat> Myron Reed at the time, like following like his like uh, indie career. And I'd wanted to see him in person. And he had posted on his Twitter that he was going to be at the Century Center in South Bend. Okay. And I was like, I didn't even know there was indie wrestling like around here. Like, cool. I'm going to go to this. So I went and they started plugging rent wrestling And I'm like, interesting. So as soon as I get home from the show, I hit the group chat and I'm like, yo, like we should rent, rent a ring. And everybody is like, yes. And I was, so I reached out to Merle and Merle gave me like the details, the quote and all that. And I messaged the group back and I said, this is how much it is. I'm getting married like a month before this show. I don't have the money to pay for all of this. So we need to come together if this is what we want to do. And everybody's like, yep, let's do it. So we split the, it came down to like, it was like 15 bucks each of us. It's not bad so at all. So I'm like, let's go, let's do this. And uh, at my wedding, Kyle Shaddix, been one of my friends for a long time, and Cliff Kilmeister, one of my best friends for a long time. They both come to my wedding, and I start telling them about this wrestling thing. And I wanted a ring announcer for it because I didn't want to just, I didn't want to do any ring announcing. I suck at talking. Oh. So I'm like, let's go. So uh, I asked Kyle because he's just a hype individual yeah, in yes. general. Yeah, and yes. uh, he was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'm like, okay, cool. I was like, you should kind of do like some punk rock type thing, like a punk rock ring announcer. And he did that for us. And uh, Killmeister, he did the audio. And we had a front yard wrestling. So have you ever been trained as a wrestler? Did yes. You just, yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll get to it. Oh, uh, so, oh, it's after all of this. Yeah. So oh. we did this backyard, this backyard thing. <laughs> and then uh, we were like, the group, we were like, we want to continue working together. Like, let's, let's keep doing this. So we, we hit Merle up to rent the ring again for our next, like, show. And it's, like, two or three days before, and it looks like it's going to rain. And I'm like, shit, I already paid for this. Like, he's, I don't think we're going to get the money back. Oh. So I start calling every place local that I can to try and, like, persuade them to let us stick a ring in there and beat the hell out of each other. Top Notch Physique called me back. So that's where Top Notch Physique's affiliation comes in. Okay. That same show, Merle called somebody that was originally from this town that was an indie wrestler. He's not a wrestler anymore. He's kind of been blacklisted from everything. I don't really affiliate with him or anybody else uh, affiliates with him. But he came and was like, he was indie wrestler. And he was like, I need to talk to you, 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 you. And he pulled us all to the side and he was like, you guys are out of all the people here, the ones that I see like potential in. Wow. And I would like to like kind of start training you and taking you with the shows. Okay. So we started riding with him and going to shows. He got us looked on, uh, hooked on uh, EHF, got us like there and uh, we got booked. After like the first or second show, I was like, I was kind of seeing that he wasn't like a person that I really wanted to affiliate with. Okay. So I started kind of talking to Adam from EHF, the uh, old owner promoter and uh, telling him like, Hey, like I kind of would like to get away from him and this gimmick if possible. Uh, his values and whatnot, like I, I don't vibe with it. You can tell when, I mean, it, not necessarily to talk bad about him. He just didn't, Go with you like it wasn't right. on your level right so uh he told me he was like well i kind of want you to start tagging with uh b.e stone and i was like okay <laughs> and i was like i don't know who the hell that is but sure <laughs> and uh when he messaged b.e stone and said hey i want you to start tagging with h2 uh he said i don't know who that is 
So we just we showed up one day, and he's like, "Hey, this is Hayden. This is Brandon." I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool. Nice to meet you." So we started uh, tagging there, and uh, we started tagging there at EHF. And Jaden's going to distract me now, make me lose my train of thought. Oh, well, I mean, doors aren't supposed to be open yet, but um, I'll be there soon. Uh, she's in there. See? See? We don't no. edit anything. Don't edit. This is raw, uncut stuff, and everyone's going to know Jaden quits a nuisance. No, because we didn't see him, so it's just you saying it's him. Jaden quits a nuisance. <laughs> No, but I love Jaden. But uh, yeah, so I started tagging with Stone and kind of learning some stuff from Stone. And uh, Dollar started running like seminars oh. and started doing like some training. So I, I finished my training kind of with Dollar. And then like, obviously, Jaden had a hand in helping out. And uh, You said obviously. I did not know that. Yeah. Well. Obviously, yeah. you two did, but I was yeah, clueless. My bad. Um, but yeah, so Jaden, he, he came in like when we were doing like the, the yard stuff and like trying to help us out and stuff oh. and like make us more legit. Okay. So, uh, and then, so I'm traveling with stone and stuff. And then like every Sunday I was going to Niles and training with, uh, Tyler and Steve. Okay. And so like, I, I just kind of sharpened everything up with like dollar, Tyler, Steve, and then. Jaden helped with like a lot of like psychology stuff and whatnot. That's a lot of work. Yep. And then uh, so from there, uh, we continue doing like this like hokey ass backyard stuff, but we're in a gym and now we're actually getting trained. So it's like it's getting better. And I was like, we need to like put a kibosh to this soon though. Like I don't want to like keep doing this and like it make us look like carny or bad okay because like we're, we're wrestling for nobody for free in this gym like doing nothing so we ended up planning like a year-long storyline that we consolidated all to like six months and it was uh team bcw which was jason hotch and eli shelton versus me and one other guy that's no longer part of wrestling and we did like losing company defuncts and my company lost so I'm like, oh, my company's defunct now. Everybody thought we were going to win, and I liked to throw that curveball at them. Because right. we had, like, an online, like, following a little bit. And uh, then when they did the first episode of BCW Post, uh, When Worlds Collide, we started talking about, like, uh, they started talking about potential investor, somebody wanting to buy BCW. And... At the end of the show, after they hyped this up, Eli's phone rang, and it was his general manager saying that the investor is here, and he's closed the deal. And it was revealed that I purchased BCW for $5.74. <laughs> so <laughs> I bought them. A specific low amount. Yes. <laughs> so I bought them, shut them down, and announced to our YouTube audience that starting in just a few months, There'd be no backyard anymore, no YouTube wrestling, no, it's professional wrestling. We're opening the doors to top-notch physiques, and we're bringing talent in. And, like, that's really the story of GLWA that's and how dope. GLWA got started. Um, I did some single stuff in GLWA in the beginning, uh, just because I was still relatively green and wanted to find my footing as a wrestler before I brought Stone to be my tag partner. So I did some single stuff and then Stone and I inevitably started tagging together. Um, we were, I think we're the longest reigning tag champs in company history, thanks to COVID. Uh -huh. uh, but, uh, so you prefer the tag over single then? I do, yeah. I like tag wrestling a lot. Uh, it's, it's, it's way easier. Um, I'm also, right, fair. I'm also in like really horrible shape compared to like how I used to be. So, uh, the end of my singles, uh, run, I ruptured my ACL and, Ooh, uh, ow. we were really close to like me and stone starting to tag. And I was like, ah, I'm fine. It's just an ACL, it's just a knee. Right. So just, sir. <laughs> I got another one. Yeah. 
So <laughs> I, uh, I ended up wrestling and working for like three years with like the torn ACL. Uh, it probably wasn't ruptured at the beginning, uh, yeah. but I probably just continued to just make it worse. Uh, every once in a while I would do something and I'd feel a pop and I'd be like, yeah, that wasn't good. Mm. And, uh, so stone kept talking about, he was going to retire and I wanted to ride this last wave with him. So I'm like, all right, like let's, let's ride it. Like once you're done though, like I got to go. And he changed like his retired date a couple times. And after like, so during COVID when everything was shut down, I like aggressively like tried to like rehab my knee and like okay. it was feeling really good. And then EHF did a uh, closed set, like no fans uh, show. I heard there was a lot of that. There, we did a lot of it for GLWA. Um, EHF, I think did two of them. Okay. But uh, I went and I used to do this thing where I'd slide because my nickname was the Ginger Ninja. So I'd slide in the ring on my stomach and flip off of my stomach and land on my feet. That's fun. I slid, flipped, and I felt my knee go. Oh. Boom. And I was like, mm, oh. that, that didn't feel good. Oh. So I wrestled the match, and I was like, that's, Jesus that's, that's Lord, not good. Eh? So I knew something wasn't right. And, uh, but I wrestled the match anyway. Yeah, and then I just wrestled <laughs> probably like 15, 20 more. And then I was like, oh I was like stone, like I, I like I gotta stop soon. So like we need to do our gimmick. So we ended up uh, running like a retirement angle with Stone, and at Wrestleversary three, which was our first show back with fans after COVID, uh, Stone came out to announce his retirement. I came in, interrupted him, and I was like, hold on, like wait a minute, time out, like respectfully, like <clears throat> you told me that your last match would be against me. I'm hurt. I've been hurt and I've been waiting for this match. So you're giving me that match tonight. And so we had the match. Uh, I went over and Stone retired. And I announced just a couple days later that uh, my wife and I were expecting our firstborn and that I would be stepping away from in-ring competition indefinitely. Okay. So I had to schedule all my doctor's appointments, had to see my doctor. They saw me as a new patient because I hadn't gone to the doctors in like four years, which is BS. If you're a doctor and you see me, I'm your patient. I don't care if it's five years, 10 yeah, years, no, whatever. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, I was stopping hurts. at the amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah. Since I, you it, had been to the doctor. If I have to pay for it, I'm not going. All right. Fair, oh, good. Fair enough. Fair uh, enough. That was probably like the first or second time I'd gone to a doctor since I'd been 18. Yay, America. <laughs> so I went and my doctor, he's like, yeah, you definitely like tore your meniscus. Oh. I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, how do I fix that? He's like, I'm going to have to refer you to an oral surgeon. I'm like, okay, cool. So mm. he referred me to uh, a doctor locally here in Cloma, Dr. Postma. Shout out. Um, he took me in and he was like, I was explaining to him like what I did. I was honest with him. I lied to my real doctor because he always he was yelling at me about doing sports anyway. But I, I knew this doctor's trying to fix me okay. and I'm giving him like what I want to do. Okay. So, uh, he was like, yeah, he's like, it's going to be like a year probably. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm like, okay, that's, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, uh, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think a year is that much, is it? It feels like forever. I'm sure it does. Um, so I ended up going and I saw this doctor and I was explaining everything. And he was like, nah, he was like, that's not meniscus. He's like, I think you ruptured your ACL. And he had this like little like model thing. And he's like, this is the ACL. And he like pulled it out. He's like, this is like the equivalent of like having a ruptured ACL. He's like, play with it. And I'm like, I pulled the shin bone out of like the knee socket. I'm like, oh yeah, that's oh. that's what's going on. He was oh. like, yeah, he's like, that's your ACL. Oh. I'm like, oh, sweet. Um, is that less of a recovery time then? No. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The ACL was the, was the uh, full year, especially because it was like completely ruptured. Um, so I had to go through uh, total ACL reconstruction surgery. So basically... 
they removed my whole ACL and gave me a donor hamstring. Oh. Created ACL. So, um, wow. yeah, shout out to that family. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so he could have taken from my hamstring, but he said like m- people complain for years on the pain on the hamstring versus imagine. the ACL. I can imagine. So that's why I'm fat and out of shape now is because I'm afraid to do anything too cool and hurt it again. I mean, yeah. are you wrestling though, right? Yeah, but I don't do like 450 splashes anymore. Okay. Anything I mean, super fun. You can still have fun and be a fun yeah. wrestler and not do all that fancy. I stuff. Uh, I definitely have like started to like enjoy like the amazing H2 gimmick, and I really like the butcher. Like, I, I, a lot of people tell me they really like the butcher gimmick. Uh, it's scary. I don't like it. I'm sorry. That's fine. I'll get over it. I don't um, hate it. I just it's just. Well, it's horror movie ish, and yeah, sometimes uh, I've done in a horror movie ish. Inspired kind of by like Dexter and John Moxley. Yeah, maybe I'll like it better if I can. I like Dexter. Yeah, look, think about it as Dexter. Like I literally refer to it as me, so the you're man, bad to the, bad. the human, H two, the man, letting my dark passenger take control. Okay. And like I only bring the character out when it's something that I feel like the amazing H two might not be able to handle or might not be willing to handle. Like I brought the butcher because I thought that that was the best shot of ending Timothy Savage. And I brought the butcher because downtown Felix. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. Basically, yeah. Like maybe I'm a little crazy. All right. I don't hate it as much anymore. See, I made a fan. <laughs> Got one. Just, just, just one. one. Just one. That's all I need. It's fine. I'm like two in in. <laughs> In one, so. Yeah, well, you got two Facebooks, so. <laughs> I do. Bingo. I do. So, but yeah, that's basically my story, and uh, that's kind of like how we got here to GLWA. Like, I built the relationship with Top Notch Physiques before GLWA was even here. If anybody ever hears me talk about the the reboot or the Great Reset or the Before Times, that's what I'm talking about. It's like the NWF, BCW days okay. and stuff, like. But yeah, so I did train to answer like your question uh, with Dollar and Tyler and Steve and Jaden and Stone and just a lot of people had their hand in working with me. I think they did a good job. I try. I'm, and I'm assuming you're still honing your craft, right? A little bit, yeah. A little it's, bit. Uh, it's been a lot more difficult to make free time since uh, Jackson's been born. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That happens. That kid is a bona fide war machine that can't be contained. <laughs> he's a machine, I'll tell you. He keeps me it. on my toes. He's a, he's a total heel. He's just a bad guy. And he's, then he's the best kid ever. Yeah. Because all the heels are the best ones. I'm telling you. I don't like most of them. No, most heels would burn. They're, they're awful people, but for their people, they're good. That's fair. I still don't like Kyle Shaddix. I don't think yeah, Kyle Shaddix likes Kyle Shaddix. That's true. I, His name is Kyle, so. Okay, yeah. Kyle's a stupid name. Yep. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, go drink your monster and chew on drywall, Kyle. <laughs> stupid idiot. But yeah. You should be nice to him. Okay, I'm sorry, bad. Kyle. I love you. <laughs> kind of I didn't sometimes, say why. maybe. Kind of sometimes, maybe. You're all right. So if so if um that's my take a pill alarm. I'm sorry. I have to shut oh, it off. You're good. Um. So, is long term wrestling in your plans? So, uh, basically, when I was growing up, I had said that I wanted to be a wrestler, and I had some family members that told me that was a stupid like plan and that I would never be able to do it. Yeah. And uh, I'm here today as a wrestler, basically just to tell and motivate. So basically, it's a middle finger to the people that told me, no, you can't do it. Best middle finger in the world. And it's also to motivate, like, the small kids. Like, if this short, fat ginger can be a pro wrestler, like, maybe I could probably be, like, a firefighter or something. (laughs) Short, fat ginger. I cannot with you. (laughs) I cannot. I'm very unfiltered. (laughs) No, that's fine. Uh, I I definitely like to roast myself as well. (laughs) It makes it easier, like, when people roast me. Because if you say it first, then it's yep. already been said. Bingo. So what what effect do you have? Yes. Exactly. No, I feel your feels, <laughs> sir. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, I want to wrestle long enough to where my son can watch me wrestle. 
and like have in real life yeah okay. and have a memory of it that way he knows if dad could be a wrestler i can be literally anything i want all right so, that's really nice i like yeah. that that's a yeah. that's a good long-term goal yeah so after that like we'll see where i'm at and what I'm, how my body feels and uh what plans i have and like what goals on my bucket list i have when i started back after uh, my acl uh, surgery i had a like just a list of people that i wanted to work and i've crossed just about all of them that's off. dope so so what do you want to do with with glow i sorry, just want to keep sorry. blowing it up uh tonight actually uh i don't know if you've checked our facebook but uh we sold out vip i did see that and I shared we that officially I was like an hour ago sold out ringside yay so we're two of those yes <laughs> um <laughs> So we've done that, and uh, last month we broke our attendance record. I saw. And I'm so excited for that. Like, yeah. I want you to out as much as I love the relationship you have with Top Notch, and I do. It's great. Like, it's oh yeah, like, outgrowing Top Notch is a thousand percent like yes. the goal, or to force them to expand. Yes, that yep. oh, that'd be even better. Yeah. So that's uh, that's the goal. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's gonna have a hell of a good show. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, I love Top Notch. I love the relationship we've built. I love Tim. Tim's the shit. I love him, uh, even though he doesn't have a mullet anymore. Oh. But uh, yeah, I love Top Notch. Uh, it's one of my favorite places in the world is to sit in that room, whether I'm in the ring that night or not. Like uh, a big thing I really focused on when I had like my injury was i was like what is what are we doing wrong because we were struggling uh to get fans in the door okay and uh this is year six and so we're we're now like i feel like we're starting to like really like, like blow this up this is year six yes A lot of yep. are now discovering it yeah I mean, we discovered we're it on, on we're coming up on two years so yeah here. it's been two years since we started coming that's crazy came across that on YouTube. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm like, where the fuck is Coloma, Michigan? <laughs> That's what a lot of people say. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Coloma, so like I was, uh, I was born and raised like here. Like, okay. I lived in uh, Gary, Indiana for like six, the first six months of my life. But I mean, I don't remember it. It's, it is the murder capital of the world, but maybe that's where the butcher, like <laughs> really like the inspiration came from. But um, no, like uh, I was born in like Berrien Springs and um, all my family was here. My dad and my mom wanted to like go and try to build something themselves. Okay. So they went to Gary and it didn't work out. So we moved back here and I lived in Coloma till I was like 13. And then we moved to Benton Harbor, which just around the corner. Yeah. It's not very um, far. And then from Benton Harbor, moved back to Coloma a couple of years later. And then, uh, then my wife and I started like dating and we, uh, we got a house together in Waterville, which is literally yeah. another city yeah. connected to yep. Coloma. Uh, and then that house was too small. We started renting a house in Hager Shores, which is like a, it's like off of like Coloma. Okay. It's like like a the, suburb yeah they, okay. they try to claim like they're their own city but like this is just the redneck area of coloma it's, okay. it's fine uh <laughs> and then uh we decided we were at a we were at a spot where we were comfortable enough to buy our own house and bought a house in benton harbor which is we're kind of we're in a really weird spot like riverside is another like suburb of coloma and Riverside actually has their even like their own zip code. Oh, and I was like, that's weird. But my zip code is the Benton Harbor zip code. But I can like spit at Coloma. Oh, like that seems. I'm like in like this weird like Bermuda Triangle of like almost oh, Coloma, them. and like everywhere I've lived, like pretty much other than Gary, has been like just like right around Coloma. So Coloma's just home to me where i went to school it's where i graduated it's it's just where i grew up and like there it's used a good to be place then I, I love it yeah it's one of my favorite like places in the world like 
obviously I do like to go to like Kalamazoo every once in a while, like to have some fun or something or South Haven or Holland. But like at the end of the day, Coloma's home. And that was a big thing. And when we started like GLWA with, uh, after I've made the relationship with top notch, there used to be some indie wrestling that would come here every once in a while. And, uh, it stopped when I was in like eighth grade and like, really? I, we never had anything here again. And I was like, it's so weird. Like I want to bring it back. And it is really weird. Cause you're pretty, I mean, centrally located, like you're in right. amongst a lot of things. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah you're not too no. far from a lot of things. Right. Yeah. Well, right. Hour and a half, but even, right. even Grand Rapids, it's not that far. Right. But yeah, so like Coloma's just always been home to me. And like, that was a big thing. Like I wanted to bring wrestling back to this part of Michigan. And I think we've done a pretty good job. I think like, you have. We're, we're, uh, we've been given the, the moniker Coloma's best kept secret. Yeah. And uh, I think the secret is starting to get out. I think it is too. I talk about you guys all the time. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> God, because yeah. you guys are great. <sighs> like I came... He's like, well, let's just do the stuff on YouTube. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, I'll go wherever. It doesn't matter. Right. And we came, and I was here, and I was like, mm, hmm, ABC all right. And I think AVZ was at the first show, yeah, show we were at. Out. I'm going to be your clone mom. I'm like, where the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. And I so like AVZ. But I wasn't expecting then. a lot, and then I got way more than a lot. Yeah. Like, it we, was we try to so let our, our stories, like, really, like, take over and it's I, really great one thing i like i hate about a lot of indie wrestling is you'll go to like these shows and it's like just random matches yeah. just for the yeah, sake of like, matches like there's a story between behind almost every match even we if I have don't like the story that's happening it's still a story and i still follow it right that's a like, lot of west michigan looking though if you show like, up and there's guys there and yeah fighting. i don't like right? that i like the story <laughs> yeah like it's theater I'm for christ's sake 100 percent, 100 percent. like have done that. This, oh i'm sorry no it's me <laughs> i get uh, passionate the the stories are what people remember mm -hmm. like they're not going to remember every headlock mm -hmm. every head scissors every enziguri every super kick but they're going to remember like the stories that are told. They're going to um, remember Kyle Shaddix is a jackhole. Yeah, stupid Kyle. <laughs> love you still. <laughs> but I love I you. Um, <laughs> stupid idiot Kyle. <laughs> I feel so bad. Just kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, so like the stories are like, that's what people remember. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember I was starting on talking about this, but somehow I derailed myself and continued while I was injured. And I was trying to figure out like what we were doing, like what we could do different. I was like, I'm going to sit as a fan and like, don't anybody talk to me. Like I'm going to sit in the crowd as a fan and figure out, well, I'm going to watch the fans and then like think. And like, uh, I started to just like realize like the stories are good. The wrestling's pretty good. Uh, but the atmosphere sucks. It's just, it's a ring in a gym. And like Tim lets us suspicious noises. Uh, Tim lets us do just about anything we want with that room. And I was like, man, can I buy like some stage lights and stuff and like rebuild the entrance play? And he's like, I don't care. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, cool. Oh, I did make notes. I forgot they're on my phone, but I did make notes about the the last the pay per view -y oh, yeah. show that I watched. Yes. Oh, the uh, the fully produced. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I wanted to. I keep forgetting to send it to you. Oh, uh, that's okay. <laughs> but no, I think that whole like undercover boss thing, like I think that's smart because sometimes, actually most of the time, you're not looking at it from like my perspective or right. like somebody else's perspective. You're looking at it from, which is a valid Especially perspective to have. You know, knows your yeah. Owner. Yeah. No you one knows your name. Off. People are starting to figure it out. Yeah. Um, well, we just blew it all down. Yeah, out. that's fine. <laughs> I've been blowing the cover for a little bit anyway, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So like day-to-day -day operations is stone and, uh, Steve Sterling jr. They're like day-to-day -day operation. I just handle like all like the, uh, like the taking care of the venue and setting all the show up like on show day and making uh, the cord go to the cord place. Yes. So that I'm assuming that was so the live stream. Yep. 
Yep. Okay. So the internet here is kind of hit or miss. And uh, so I just bought a 200 foot ethernet cable and just run it from one end of the gym to the other. Okay, whatever works, right? right? Yeah. And uh, it's, it's been all very DIY. I like that you're doing all of those options for people to- For sure. To get a hold of watching you. Yeah, uh, I had a fan uh, message me earlier today and uh, they were like, hey, uh, we're not gonna be able to make it. Um, but I saw that with a ticket leap purchase, no matter what, even if you can't make it, you get the live stream. So if you buy like a VIP seat and can't make it, then you still have access to the ticket leap, like okay. or, to, or not the ticket leap, to the pay-per-view, the okay. digital live stream, because the link is, a, is attached. So if anybody buys a ticket ever and you can't make it, you still can watch the show. That's, can you buy just the live stream? Is that yep. an option too? Yep, that is an option. If you go to our ticket leap and go to the event, it's uh, it's got the options, general, ringside, VIP, digital live stream. Okay. Yep. So, Fair enough. See, and that's smart. Another way you can watch uh, at home is through our Patreon, becoming a Patreon. Patreon's actually like just a third of the price of the digital live stream. So you if guys you become, have so many good deals. I try. I want to have a new deal. What is it? We posted on the push with through the, about it. oh, the, oh that's the whole. Oh yeah. But for the whole season. Oh yeah, uh, so, a season pass. I know what I'm, yes. Yep, yeah, so we were given like a out. discount. So like if you buy a season's pass, you get a ticket to all the shows and you're actually gonna save money rather than coming and spending. Say you wanted to buy a, a VIP. If you come to every show and purchase a VIP ticket, I think it comes up to like 120 bucks. Okay. And we're selling them for like 100. So you get like. I mean, it's a deal to Or begin it's 140 with. bucks. We're selling it for 100. You get two shows for free. That's a good deal. Yeah. It's so. a good deal. And vendetta tapings. Yep. Right? And, uh, and you will have. So actually, spoiler alert, starting next month, vendetta is going to be our pre show. Oh. So we'll open the doors uh, probably starting like quarter to six. And then Vendetta will start at like six so and go to like six forty five. Oh, we're at the very last real vendetta taping then. Correct. Oh. And it's actually going right now. So oh, you Mark. might miss it. Oh, <laughs> so if you want to wrap it up. It we wouldn't can. be the first time. Right. <laughs> she missed the entire show because she was fucking Aaron O'Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry, not hours. sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Like, yeah, as long as I don't miss minutes. Josh completely, it's fine. Right. So well, you'll definitely get to boo to Josh tonight. Or I cheer him. I don't ever boo Josh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, no. Your house, your house stands Josh yeah. Morris. Look at I remember read. you said that. I do, and you remember. You said that to me when I, you Did refused I? to give me a high five when I wrestled Josh. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, I remember. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I it's still okay. I still stand by it though because an we elephant do, never forgets. We stand by Josh Morris in this. I'll see. That's why it's I don't okay. lie because I don't remember. His that's stuff. okay. I like Josh. He's <laughs> an all right guy. Maybe I guess he's an okay wrestler. He is superb <laughs> craftsman, this style sir. Is definitely unique. First time I saw him, like, his, his style I mean, is your like style is unique too. His style is like Jar Jar Banks. Like, wow. Isn't it? Isn't it though? How does anybody ever work for you? You're so mean. He's like, well, I, I don't. Jar Jar I, I don't Banks own. So bad. I, I don't own GLWA. Oh. Okay. It's no. No. With you. How about that? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Are, are we shooting? Are, are we are we being real? I'm if so, real. if so, I'll I'm tell you that. Real. I'll tell you that. Like, I really like hate Josh Morris, but like yeah, Josh that like shows up like before like yeah, he's the day. Nice. I like I like that right. guy. Yeah, I like that guy. Right. Yeah, yeah, Kyle. Uh, yeah, Josh shoot name. Uh, Kyle shoot yeah. name still kind of a dick, but uh, yeah. He seems pretty nice to me. Josh? Both, no, Kyle too. Kyle? Nice Kyle stuff. started being nice? Huh. His so dad brings a sign that says boo and Shattuck <laughs> sucks. So, wow! I was gonna say. Wow! So I still I hate know. Shattuck, so he's stupid and yeah. ugly. He's an ugly face, stupid head. Yep. yep. I agree. Okay. The bedwetter, Kyle Shattuck. Well, it's funny, I could just. Instead I of the bloodwetter. It's funny pun. That's funny, I like that. <laughs> 
I can't take credit for that. That no? was one of our fans. Oh, uh, I like I like it though. The uh, the auto family that comes, uh, Randa that comes with them. Uh, her and Stone have their own podcast. Oh, that's and dope. She's been calling uh, instead of calling Kyle the blood letter. She's calling him the bedwetter. I like the bedwetter. I think I'm gonna start referring. I I want to remember that. I want that locked funny. in there. <laughs> Lock it in. I, I'm gonna try. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, that's really just the story of me and GLWA. Well, thank you. I appreciate you sitting down and talking. For sure. All right, and we are gonna we're gonna we're gonna call it short, just because mostly because I can't sit in this position anymore. Oh. <laughs>